Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Celtic Mind podcast, episode 9. Um, in this podcast, we're going to be discussing from the title you probably know how Celtic can rebuild the Challenge Rangers next season, and also um, Eddie Howe has also stated his agent has said, come out and said um, on Sky Sports saying that the latest if he's going for a job will be the summer, you know, the, the most to, he's not going to any job. So, it could be a blow for Celtic, so we could not. We could now see a difference in where we, we're not going to get Eddie Howe, so it'll be a different person, a different manager. So, you you know, we'll discuss a bit more, guys, about all the, tit- the titles it says um, after the intro. So, you Alright, after that. Intro, uh, intro there, guys. So let's talk about Celtic's rebuild first before we get into that Eddie Howe stuff there. So um, Celtic's overall is gathering pace with incoming chief executive Dominic Kai early arrival, and the anticipated appointment of Eddie Howe as the club's new manager. Mm. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll discuss a wee bit about that here. Um, so Dominic Kai will join Celtic early with the club begin a massive rebuild on multiple fronts, having said it. He entered the league title in meek fashion to Rangers. Many key figures from a glorious decade for Celtic are departing or have already left. The pressure will be on to lay the foundations for immediate success, but beyond simply winning, what needs to be done at Celtic in the coming weeks to re-establish the position at the top of the Scottish football? Mm, question mark there. So, this is the football department, but Mackay's decision to join the club almost three months early emphasises the desire from Celtic to get their house in order as soon as possible. Initially, Mackay was not due to arrive until the start of July, shortly before Celtic's new season begins with the Champions League qualifiers, which will become more hazardous with every passing year. Mackay has um, already been involved in the decision-making process around the expected appointment of Eddie Howe. Now we don't know, you know, he's waiting to the summer at least, so we don't know if he's actually going to come. Um, dispelling it to an extent, uh, extent the notion among the support that the club has been treading in water, right? So, a new manager, however, is just one strand of a complete overall within the football department with now beginning to criti- criticise. Um, Neil Lennon's exit in February was followed by that head of football operations, Nick Hammond, in March. The man responsible for much of the recruitment over the last two seasons, which have been awful, especially last season. Um, or this season, technically, you know. Um, this is an expectation that the position of sport director will be created a role at Ken and that uh, filled by Ross Willen at Rangers. How is keen is keen to work uh, work once more with his board of technical director Richard Hughes, the former Scotland midfielder, but Celtic's board are understood to be intent on appointing their own figurehead within the framework of football um, department. Manchester City's head of Dep- uh, football partnerships, Farewell Harkin. Um, has been working, has been heavily linked with the role, uh, but thus far nothing has been agreed. This is an element of caution in his move from Celtic, perhaps understandably, if indeed he is the man, but one day, how he turns to English football, the club does not want to be caught in a similar situation when Brendan Rodgers suddenly left for Leicester, taking most of the entire coaching staff and recruitment, um, you know, with him basically. As much as it might be how show a sense of uh, continuity or control depending on one's viewpoint is likely to be retained by the club. Whoever takes charge of recruitment must improve Celtic's uh, decidedly mixed recent record in the transfer market. While Jeremy Frimpong was bought for just um, 300000 from Man City and then sold to obviously Bayer Leverkusen, we made a video on it uh, back in January, for more than £10 million. More expensive arrivals such as Patrick Kamala and Alvin Ayeti have largely disappointed. The ability to scout the lower leagues in England and foreign markets for undiscovered bargains, a once fruitful policy now faces its biggest test yet. Question marks also surround interim manager John Kennedy, the former centre-half whose career was cut short by injury, has long been admired within the club and touted as a potential Celtic boss. He is unquestionably associated with his, the, this season's failings, agree on that one, but could stay on part as the new coaching setup. Though he recently admitted being in temporary charge um, was, you know, he's 
own appetite to be manager in his own right. And the event how he was appointed, um, his long time as Bournemouth assistant Jason Tindall was recently joined. Uh, has recently joined Sheffield United, which may rule him out, as would the need for knowledge for Scottish football. That could open the door for Peter Grant re to return to Celtic once more. An iconic figure as a player, Grant played with um, and coached how at Bournemouth and could um, endorse him yeah, easily into, you know, hopefully Scottish football maybe. Uh, another ex-Celtic player, Ruger Bay, lent how his ear is Mark uh, Burchill, uh, currently a Bournemouth scout. So there you go, that's a wee bit of there. Mixing between, obviously, the Celtic rebuild and Eddie Howe as well. Um, so, Celtic squad badly needs an injection of flesh, uh, capital and personnel. Or some already heading out the door and others clearly keen to leave. Um, the announcement last month that Scott Brown would be joining Aberdeen as a player coach leaves a massive leadership gap that, would, that will probably be, uh, be never filled. Which, it's, it's very sad to say that, but yeah, it's probably not going to happen again. Uh, for all his advancing years and gradual decline, Brown's influence in the Celtic dressing room and on the pitch has been immeasurable. Um, from Paul I mean, Cham departed in January window, though in Cham could be back in the summer. I don't really want him back, but there you go. And Edward and Ayer may be the next to go in the summer, if the price is right for Celtic to cash in. Ryan Christie's contract is running down with no sign he will extend it, and McGregor is near the peak of his powers with suitors in England circling. Far from a gradual translation, uh, transition, the squad that won an invincible treble for Rodgers back in 2016-17 could soon be dismantled. So there you go. Um, Celtic have three goalkeepers who have failed to shine, including one Barkas, who is thre uh, threatening to be an expensive flop. Uh, the the defence suspect all season required a total rebuild. Ayers itching to move on. Julian has recovered from a serious injury and three low knees. Shane Duffy, Diego Laxa and John Joe Kenny will depart. Greg Taylor could be a long term answer at left back, but at least four additions are required to establish some uh, stability. Um, Celtic have already been linked with Howe's long-time Bournemouth captain Simon Cook, who is out of contract in the summer. Um, options are stronger in the centre midfield, where Ismail Asor, of course, you've seen, seen that, obviously David Turnbull, have formed a positive young heartbeat for the future. McGregor's future is uncertain um, if he stays and inherits the captaincy for Brown. Um, he could lead Celtic for the rest of his career, but the feeling um, persists he is ready to test himself at a higher level. Um, Neil Beaton and Tom Rogic both seem ready for a fresh start elsewhere. While reinforcements are required in wide areas, Lurie El Yunusi may not return. Mikey Johnson is yet to make a major breakthrough, and James Forrest has only recently recovered from a, a serious injury there. In attack, we go to a Yeti and Kamala need to improve quickly. Um, they can be rival um, replacements for Edward. Otherwise, major turnover will take place here as well. And what for Lee Griffiths, a, a consistent goal, a goal scorer when sharp. He's been unable to reach full fitness since the start of the pandemic. And with only one year left on his contract, will he be required by the new regime? Um, Refocus on Europe now for the, this part of the rebuild, guys. I, I mean, it's not been the best for... Um, if you've watched a few things with them, so yeah. Um, Friends Varus one of the clubs to stun Celtic in the early qualifying rounds for the Champions League. Um, Celtic's fit, um, you know, in achieving 10 in a row has been to the determined of the club's European ambitions. In 30 seasons under Neil Gordon Stratton and John Lynn's first spell as manager, Celtic reached the Champions League group stages on eight occasions and three times they progressed to the knockout stages. Since 2014, they've mixed with Elite Europe just twice under Rodgers and failed to qualify both times. Regressing in Europe was perhaps inevitable due to the winning financial gulf between Celtic and Europe's top clubs. The days of Barcelona and Manchester United being toppled in the group stages are now consigned to history. That does not excuse Celtic from failing to beat teams with smaller budgets like your Malmos, your Maribor, your Reiki Athens, your Cluj and your Ferran Varos. I've all claimed the Scottish champions scalp and qualifying from recent times. Celtic's part re reputation as a Europe European fortress is now a distant memory. The club have suffered some in past recent re defeats at home. Um, I've got to mention them because well uh, well that's just really talking about the rebuild at the most finest. 
Then had there been a, a foreign reversal to Sparta Prague in this re season's Europa League, well, there's been some memorable European results, such as the 2019 double against Lazio. I was there at home. Check it out uh, on the channel, guys. It has been a steady decline. Celtic's inability to invest in the squad at the right time to enable Champions League group stage participation has become a recurring, a recurring, a recurring, sorry, fault. Even more, Gallant um, is the impressive rec record in continental competition established across the city by Gerard and three seasons the Europa League competition Rangers have won or drawn every other qualifying matches or and lost just six European games in total, making an knockout stages in each of the last two seasons. Eddie Howe has never managed in Europe, but if he gets the job, his first um, competitive games as Celtic manager will be the crucial qualifiers. Scotland's coefficient has skyrocketed since Gerrard's arrival, so much that for the first time in more than a decade, the two top Scottish Premiership will participate in next season Champions League qualifiers, yet the biggest prize all lies ahead. Um, whoever wins the the title next season, 2021-2022, are almost certain to qualify direct for the Euro, Euro, uh, Champions League group stages and head at a financial jackpot. Celtic are fortunate to have this opportunity in front of them, ironically created by Rangers improvements, but with Jeddah side now at full speed, this, the stakes could not be higher for the new man coming in. So there you go guys, there is a bit about Celtic's rebuild in the summer and what they really have to do to get back on top of Rangers and as I said earlier guys, yeah, um, disappointing to see Eddie Howe, um, his agent coming out and saying that he's not looking for a job and until at least the summer he's not really, so uh, if he was to get the Celtic job it wouldn't be this summer. So. It's a bit of a blow where you'd want to see him in right away and get a feel of the team and get the signings in he wants and all that stuff. But um, we need to wait in the summer, of course, guys, to see what happens then. But fingers crossed it's Eddie Howe. I want it to be Eddie Howe. I mean, I think mostly everybody does. So fingers crossed, guys. Please just give like, guys, if you enjoyed this episode 9 of the podcast. And I'll see you guys on Saturday for the Celtic v Lumsden watch along. So until then, guys. It's live, on, it's live on Twitch and YouTube, uh, Lehman YT, and of course you're watching it on YouTube, Noodle 7. So until then, guys, peace.